Francois Ariel Dubry came to INSEAD to study for an MBA in 1974 and two years later joined the family firm Remy Cointreau. He's now chairman of the Remy Cointreau Group and of the family holding company. He's also chairman of Fondation INSEAD and sits on the INSEAD board. Welcome to Alumni Experience, Francois. Was it always your intention to join the family firm? I didn't come to the family business immediately. I was working outside and after INSEAD, I also worked outside. And I came just, it was uh, by, uh, it was an accident when I came back to the family business. My elder brother uh, got, uh, was in the family business, got sick, and my father uh, asked me whether I could come back. And I said, no way. I didn't want to, to go to a family business because uh, when you go in a family business, your CV is dead. And I can tell you why. Very simple. If you are good, well, you stay in the, in the company, so you don't need to show your CV to anybody. But if you are bad, who is going to hire somebody who has been fired by his family? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's why family businesses are successful. You have no choice. How do you deal with that additional pressure? Well, I think uh, the, the women uh, would understand that maybe, be, maybe better than the men. Because uh, they all say that if they are good, it's normal, but if they are bad, uh, it's immediately because they are a woman. It's the same thing as a family member. So you have to be better than the others. So it's a good lesson. Uh, there is no formula. The formula is you have to fight. You became a CEO of the business. Are there advantages, do you think, for a family member running the family business? Well, we have the chance, yes, in a family business is that we can take risky decisions uh, because the, the decision process is quick. If you are in control of the, of the, of the company, uh, you just need to talk to two or three people and not ask the market or put uh, your strategy in the newspapers to ask the majority of the shareholders to vote in favor. If you have the majority with you, it's easier to take a long-term decision without telling everybody what you have in mind. Uh, Reme Cointreau produces these incredibly classic brands. What are your strategic threats, I wonder? I mean, what happens, for instance, if people just fall out of love with a certain type of drink? You have to adapt yourself always. Uh, I would say every five years, every 10 years, you have to adapt yourself and then uh, adapt the products to the new. For example, in the States, uh, Five years ago, the trend was for white products, vodkas, tequilas, and so on. Now the trend is brown products, crafted bourbons, uh, whiskies, uh, cognacs. So you just you have to adapt yourself. In fact, up to 1998, uh, before the turn of the century, when the bubble burst, our company had a problem. And uh, we, we realized that we had all our eggs in one basket. So that's why, with my brother, I decided to create a family holding above to invest elsewhere and not to have all our eggs in one basket. This year, for the first time, so 16 years after, now half of our profits don't come from the original family business. It took us 16 years, but we have invested elsewhere in very different businesses. We are in drones, we are in uh, shops, we are in, well, in, in many different businesses and uh, we, um, uh, so I, I'm doing now exactly what I would have done if I was not in the family business. Do you pay attention to the share price or, and do other family members pay attention? Uh, yes, I've been asked many times, you know, in a family business, do you look at the share price because you don't sell, you don't buy? Yes, but Share price is more, is just not only money. Share price is also a, a question of pride, uh, you know. If the share price goes up, it's good for the company, good for the morale of the staff, you know. And when you are in a company, even if you are a small shareholder as a staff member uh, in any company, Shell or Unilever or whatever, you are happy when the share price of your company goes up. It's the same thing in a family business, uh, which when it's listed. 
What does the future look like for Remy Cointreau? Uh, is there going to be a smooth handover to the next generation? That's, uh, it's, uh, that's always, but not only in our business, but uh, in the family business, that's always the, the, when you pass the buck, that's always the difficult thing, you know, to decide who is going to be your successor. Uh, when, when it's the first generation to the second, it's easy. When it's going from the second generation to the third, you have to, to choose among the nieces and nephews who is the best. It's not easy and, if, and further on. So yes, in a family business, it's always a difficult part when you change generation. Thank you, Francois. Uh, one final question. Uh, what advice would you have for someone considering joining their family firm? Think twice, because think of your CV. Yeah. And then, if you go there, for example, I have now two, uh, I have five children, um, personally. I have two of, two of my children uh, have decided to come back in the family business. And I resisted one year for both of them. Uh, because I, think, I said to them, think twice before you come back. Um, uh, both are in Seattle, uh, and I, of course. <laughs> uh, and... Um, I told them, uh, think twice, because when you are there, uh, you know, your CV is dead. So you, you have to think twice, and because you are forced then to be successful. To be successful with, with the company, to be successful with the rest of the family, uh, your cousins, your... Uh, so it's, it's a tough thing, time. But if you, if you really think twice, then go. <coughs> because then you have the chance to do what you want to do because you are your own boss.